Today, we're going to learn how to use awards.com to get some inspiration and recreate this lovely website. Awards.com is pretty much a place where you can go and find lovely websites and different topics about design and development. It's sort of like Dribbble, but you can actually interact with the websites. They have different competitions that are held and judges do vote on websites. I had received a comment not too long ago regarding the possibility of making a series where we go into awards and find a website that we can uh, closely recreate using React and GSAP. And while I'm really looking forward to this series, this first episode is just going to be a beta test. And what I mean by that is I'm going to release a few episodes and see how the reactions are. If they are any good, then I will most likely continue and not only recreate the website with just the animations, but also make it interactive. The website we had chosen to recreate today is from an agency called Mel River. So I really love this because it is very easy to recreate and it has a very powerful way of demonstrating the headline or the call to action. The we craft e-commerce brands driven by instinct. That is the very first thing you see and it, it kind of just sticks with you. So the recreated version that we have done using React, GSAP, and SAS is this following one right here. And you can also see that it is in fact responsive and this is how it looks on a mobile device. And if we just scroll down, you can see that it works really, really nicely on mobile. I'll go ahead and show it to you one more time and then we can jump into the code. One thing I do want to mention is this site isn't really interactive, so clicking on anything uh, doesn't do much for us, so nothing happens. And if we click on the navigation, no navigation comes out. Uh, this is because we're only doing the very first step and depending on the feedback that I get, I'll definitely continue on this so that we can build a full blown website. If we look at the Mel River site, you can see that when you open up the navigation, it's got a really nice effect there. And for pages, when you select a case study, you can see that the page transitions are lovely as well. This is totally recreatable and it is something that I look forward to recreating in the future episodes to come. Let's go ahead and close out of these and let's open up our GitHub repository so that we can clone the starter files. You can find the GitHub repo down below. You can clone the master branch if you want. It is a simple create react app or you can select the starter files, which I'll also have linked down below and cloning this project will get you the files that are required for us to get started. So I've already went ahead and opened up my project and what you'll need to do in the terminal is run yarn install. And once you've installed all the packages, you'll run yarn start. This will start your project on a localhost 3000 and there really shouldn't be anything displayed except a message saying, hello, this is your starter files. Let's go ahead and break down the project in the source folder. When we open it up, you've got an assets folder, which holds two SVGs, a left arrow and a right arrow. And then you've got these three images, which are our case study images. I'm going to go ahead and close the terminal because we don't really need it anymore. And then in our components, it's nothing is in there. Um, this is where we'll house our react components. Let's go ahead and close that image. And then in the styles, we've got the app SCSS. So at the very top, we're importing our Google font, which is Josephine Sands. And then we are importing variables, breakpoints, and then our components for our SAS files here. And then we've just got some basic SAS for in here. I already defined the containers and media queries for our containers. If you are a little confused on how we're writing media queries here, I did create a video. Uh, actually, it's my last video uh, regarding a cool and easy way to write media queries. And that is by using include media, which is a very lovely SAS library that you could use. I've also just got the container fluid here. It's my own way of writing the container fluid. Um, I think with bootstrap, it might be a bit different, but these are just sort of boilerplate information here that you don't need to worry about. If we go into the breakpoint SAS, this is where we're using that include media library for SAS breakpoints. And then in our variables, we've simply got two variables, black and white. You can change these colors to anything you want and they'll be accessible to all the other SAS files that you create. Inside the components folder, which is still in our styles folder, we've got banner SAS, cases SAS, and header SAS. Nothing's written in here, but that's where we'll write all of our SAS regarding our components. We can then close the styles. If we jump into app.js, it's just a simple functional component with the name of app. 
and I believe that is it. So this is not a complex app in any way. The only things you're going to need to know is just a basics of React and just the basics of GSAP. If you know CSS, transitioning to SAS is really not that much of a hurdle and you should be fine. Looks like we're all ready to go, so let's go ahead and start building. Very first thing I want to do is bump up the font size. Let's go ahead and do this at 22. Open up app.js. Um, so the way I want to break down this project is I want to first build out the UI. I want to build the header component, then the banner, which is the top section, and then build out the cases that were on the bottom, and then simply adding the animations after the entire UI is built and it is responsive. This is going to be split up in different parts. So just make sure you look forward to the next video if you suddenly come to an end in a section. Now let's go ahead and jump into our components folder and we want to create a new file. This file is going to be called header.js. And then with our shortcuts, we want to create a functional component. Make sure the component name is capitalized and we'll leave it like this. So that's perfect for us. For the parent div, let's go ahead and add a class name of header. And then we're going to create a container. And then inside that container, we're creating a row. And the additional class names we're adding are a v center and then a space dash between. And these are just classes that I had created earlier specific to Flexbox. We are using Flexbox heavily in this project. And if you don't have a good understanding of Flexbox, I do recommend you to check out another video and then come back to this. But honestly, if you if you know very basic Flexbox, you should be fine. Inside the row, we're going to create a logo class. And then inside the logo class, we're adding an a tag with a forward slash for the href. And we're just simply writing agency period. Now I know the a tag isn't really uh, the right way of writing links uh, with React. And that is because you're going to need to use React Router. Um, however, I'm not using React Router on this project just yet. We're going to build out the UI and animations, but in terms of making it interactive and adding uh, router, or sorry, React Router and adding page transitions, that's going to come in later. Outside of the logo class name, let's go ahead and add our navigation or our hamburger menu. So let's do dot nav and AV. And we're just going to put two span tags in here. And this will represent our hamburger menu. You can add three. I'm just going to use two because that's what Melrever used in their website. Let's go ahead and save this. And then we can jump into our app.js and we can get rid of this H2 right here. Let's get header. And I do have auto imports. So if I just simply click enter, it's going to import header from the components directory. If I save this and then view our project, you can see we have agency at the top and then there's nothing here. So let's go ahead and start styling so that we can create our header. Let's jump back into our project and then we can go into the styles folder into components and then select the header.scss. Let me close this here. I don't know why I have that open. One thing I like doing when working with SAS is I like splitting up the components and the component styles and then simply creating that skeleton. So we have header. And then inside header, we aren't going to style container or row, so we can just move on to logo. Oops, there we go. And then inside logo, we have an A tag. Now outside of logo, we have a nav class. And inside that nav class, we do have a span tag. That's all the skeleton for header. We can start styling. So header is going to get a position of fixed and this will allow it to stay in a certain position while we're scrolling we're setting the width to 100 percent and for the height we're creating a 128 pixel for the height we're going to give it a z index of four that way when we scroll above other elements it's always going to be in the front uh, we're going to use the index quite a few times in this project so uh, just keep in mind of how close it is to you in terms of perspective we're also going to include a media query here. And so I'll be including media queries throughout the project. In this case, we want it to be um, when it is smaller or equal to a phone device. We want it to have a height of 96 pixels. So we want the height to shrink when the viewport gets smaller um, and it gets all the way to a phone device. 
Um, I can go ahead and close this header JS so that we can work with the entire header SAS here. And now for our logo, we can jump into the A tag and start styling in here. Let's set the font size to 1.2 rem. And I'm using rems, which are relative to the HTML's uh, font size, and that is equivalent to 16 pixels. And the letter spacing, we're gonna make it 0 0.05 rem. And then the color is going to be black. Make sure we add lowercase, and this variable is coming from our variable SAS. Next, we want to add text decoration set to none, and the font weight, let's give it a 700. Let's save that, and we can preview our project now. So you can see the agency here is completely styled out. We can then work on our navigation. Our nav class is going to have a width of 25 pixels. And we're going to give it a media query. And so when the media query is less than or equal to a phone viewport, we're going to set the width to 20 pixels. And the place I'm accessing this phone viewport is in our breakpoint SAS. You can see we have breakpoints here. So we have phone, tablet, desktop, large desktop. Now you are not limited to these uh, breakpoints here. You can add custom ones simply by writing 300 pixels or even 1200 pixels. Go crazy with it, whatever you want. In this case, we're just going to leave it at phone. And then in our span, we are going to create a margin dash bottom. And we're going to set the margin bottom to 0.3 rem. We're going to give them a background, not attachment, but a background. You could use color if you want, but the background is going to be black. And then the height is set to two pixels. The width is at a hundred percent and the display is set to block. Now the width is at a hundred percent of its parent. So that means the width is going to be 25 pixels and then 20 pixels in a phone. If we save this and preview our project now, we've got our header set. So we have the agency, which is our logo. And then we have the hamburger menu right here. One thing with the agency though, that I can remember if we pull up the actual final project. The letter spacing is a lot greater here than our uh, current project. And I think that is because instead of 0 0.05 rem, it's supposed to be 0 0.5 rem. And we could see that it is an exact replica of the completed project. I'm gonna go ahead and stop part one right here. Part one included finishing up the header as well as breaking down the project files. If you are excited about this project, make sure you leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Look out for part two where we're going to continue the UI and then potentially moving on to building out the animations. As always, have a wonderful day.